Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. I think a lot of times as when we get saved, we don't understand the reason for our salvation. We don't understand the reason. I think oftentimes when we come to the Lord, many of us have come to the Lord because our families were in Christ. So mother took us to church, father took us to church, and we just kind of grew up. Um, in our religious traditions, if you will. We kind of grew up, and that's, those began to be our family morals and values. But as young people, we weren't really explained why we were saved uh, or why we were baptized or why we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So it, we just kind of become anesthetized, if you will. We kind of become desensitized to our walk with God because this is just what we've done from a little bitty kid up until now. But when we really get to the point where we beg the question, why am I saved? I think once our eyes are open, once we get the epigenosis, the true understanding of why God saved us, it will begin to shift our thinking. I agree. It, it, it'll shift how we respond to the gospel. Yeah, yeah. It'll shift deacon to how we treat one another. Yeah. It'll shift us obeying the word of God or choosing not to obey the word yeah, of God yeah. because we truly understand that was our theme for 2022. It was recognizing and exercising the word of God, the manifestation of epigenosis yes. because a lot of times we are a lot of hearers of the word, uh -huh. but we're not doers Ooh, of the word. We have a lot of Christians who can quote the word of God, but are not bound by the word that they quote. Yeah. So we tell people what they should do when we ourselves don't do the thing we're telling other people to do and as a result the world doesn't see the Christ in us because oftentimes the church looks just as bad as the world does because the world the word Christ isn't constraining us the love the word of God tells us because he gave his life for us we ought to also give our life for him and when we understand that, that we have been bought with a price, Paul talks about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He talks about it in Romans chapter 6. Yes. He helps us to understand that we have, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, there's something we must do then. Okay. And for the average Christian, we think that when we get saved, that just means I'm going to heaven. I can continue to do whatever I was doing. I can live however I want to live. I can hang out how I want to hang out. I can say what I want to say. Yeah. I can do what I want to do because it's my prerogative. Right. But when we get saved, there's something that's required of us. Yes. First and foremost, the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians that we have changed systems. Oh. That we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into right. the kingdom of his dear son. I believe that's second Colossians chapter two. Right. Uh, it says we've been translated. I think chapter two, two eleven. If someone can find that for me, amen. But I know it's in Colossians, amen. Right. And so Colossians 1 13, amen. We've been translated um, from the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. God who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, leave it there, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. That's where we were before we accepted Christ. Like we that. were under the power of, of darkness. darkness. Okay. When we got saved, minister self, he translated us. He moved us from the kingdom of darkness and he put us into the kingdom of his dear son. Many of Christians don't know that. Right. So we think that we are still able to just do whatever we want to do and we not even understanding a price was paid to take us from one kingdom into another kingdom. And so when we switch kingdoms, we have a different king. I like that. I like that. I like that. Hence the word kingdom, king's dominion. Okay. That's where you get the word kingdom from, Very the king's good. dominion. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yeah. All power belongs to him. Yeah. Every being is subject to him. Yeah. He is the name above every all name. names. Yeah. Every knee shall bow and yeah. every tongue shall confess yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is no name higher than the name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. the son of the living God. Hallelujah. But for the sake of spirituality, he says this world is not my home this right. I have a kingdom mm -hmm. 
that I want those who submit to my kingdom, I have a list of commandments, rules, laws that I want you to follow. Yeah. When we went, we went on vacation right. uh, years ago, uh, we had to submit ourselves to their ordinance and how things were done. Yeah. Amen. When we went on the mission trip to Africa, yeah. amen, we couldn't insist, well, we're from the United States. They don't care. They have no this is Africa. Yeah. You on a whole nother continent. Right. This is the way we do things here. Yeah. You took your time, your money. You yeah. flew over here. You intentionally left the U.S. and came to Africa. Yeah. Now, how dare you insist on coming to Africa, but you still want to live like you in the United States? It don't work like that. Right. Elder Denise, that went over a lot of people's heads. You're in Africa. This is what we do, Pastor Hans. We are in Africa, but we want to still live like U.S. citizens. When you in certain countries, you drive on certain sides of the streets. You can't say, well, in the United States, we drive on the right side and in the other poles. And they don't care. But this is what we do, Jamet, when we come to the kingdom of God. We say, I want to be saved. I recognize you are the king of kings. I recognize this is your rule, your authority. But I still want to live like the world, though. I know you're having a Selah moment. S-E-L-A-H, Selah, means you're pausing and thinking about what I'm saying. You have been translated. Is that not what Colossians 1.13 said? Yeah. You have literally been picked up. Remember in, in our Hebrews 11, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not translated and was not found because God had translated him. But before he had this the translation, he had this testimony. that Y'all remember the, the confession that we read every week? Enoch was translated. He was picked up from one and put in another. God did that for us when we gave him our hand and said, I want to be saved. He took us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we have made the decision that we have switched kingdoms, but we're still serving the other king and not submitting to ours. Faith, that's what we do, baby. When we come from the world and we refuse destiny to honor God, that's our way of saying, you're not my king. That's where I was and that's what I'm still doing. But you want to be in this kingdom, no. Rob, we switch kingdoms. But we don't honor our king. That's why, why I believe John 6.46 says, Why do you call me your Lord and you don't do what I tell you? Try, just try John, John, John or Luke. It's why I think Luke 6.46. Luke 6.46. Help me, Holy Spirit. Memory of the upright is blessed. I declare and decree it to be so. Luke, thank you, God. And why call me your Lord and you don't do the things which I say? How am I your king when you will not forsake the kingdom I delivered you from? That's good. I like that. How am I your Lord and you won't obey me? And oftentimes I find myself of late asking the question, why did we even get saved? Right. If, if we're going to insist on living in the old kingdom and being translated over here, why we didn't just stay over there then? Right. Apostle, when you talked about Jesus being led of the Spirit, the Lord gave me a revelation just that quick. Wow. He was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. When was he led into the Spirit? After he was baptized. What baptism represents something. Right. Y'all walk with me. For those who may not understand baptism you know before we had COVID we used to have a, a, a baptism pool and for those who weren't in a waiting pool we were actually stand you up I remember when I got baptized back in 1983 yeah. couldn't swim then can't swim now I knew it was the Lord's doing hallelujah because I got in the water Jasmine and I knew I loved the Lord I'm, I'm willing Gigi to do something I can't swim I was standing up in the water and they pinched my nose, Mother Delena, and they said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what they did after that, right? Denise, they dung me in the water. I thought I was about to faint. Help me, Holy Ghost. What was taking place, princess, is I stood up as the old Sean. And when they baptized me and they dung me, I died. When you're laying prostrate in a coffin, it represents death. This is what baptism represents. And when you get up, you raise in the newness of life. That the stuff you were once doing, it stayed there in death. It died when you died. And when you're raising up, you're raised in the newness of life. When Christ was baptized, I believe it was God's way of showing the example that he was dead to flesh. And he was raising in the newness of life. And no temptation would be able to overtake him because he was dead to sin. He was dead to himself. He was dead to his temptation as evidenced by him saying, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He could have given in to the enemy, but he is the quintessential example of what happens when we are dying to ourselves and raised in the newness of life that when the enemy comes in like a flood, he can't stand no chance against us when we're walking in the spirit and we have died to the flesh. We look at that and we understand that he was tempted, but I believe, Apostle, he was showing us how to resist sin, how to resist the enemy. We can only resist it when we submit to God. We were reading that in James chapter 4. You have to submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Too many are trying to resist the devil and you have not submitted to God. You will never resist the devil until you first submit to God. It goes in that order. You can't say, I'm going to resist the devil, then turn around and try to submit to God. No, the enemy will get you caught up every single time. But I submit to you, once you submit your will to God, you will be able to resist the devil every time. Every single time. So we are dead. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, here tells us that we are a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. I even pray that you can visualize this. You're in the water. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward confession. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward confession. So what it says as an outward expression is you're letting everybody know, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That's your outward, your, your outward expression. You're showing everybody I'm identifying with the body of Christ. And that outward expression is an indication of your inward confession that you accepted Jesus Christ. So this is why you get baptized. Amen. You're identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection with Jesus Christ. You don't just get in the water. This is why we said we don't choose to baptize children without explaining to them what they're doing. And they need to make a conscious decision that this is what they want to do. I know it's the idea thing that we do as parents. We want our kids to be baptized, but they need to be able to verbalize for themselves, Sean, that they understand what they're about to do. Amen. Because what they're saying is, I'm about to die to my old nature, Hines. I don't think we understand that. Many of us don't. That's why we still do the things we do. If we understood that we had to die to ourselves, that we are identifying with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and that when we get up, we are raising in the newness of life, if we understood that, a lot of stuff we wouldn't even have to go back and ask for forgiveness for because we would beat our body, we'd make it our slave, and you would tell your flesh, we're not doing that today. We're not going that way today. You don't control me. Come on. The spirit controls me. So when Paul writes this, he understood it because of the way he was. Paul was an educated man. He was trained under Gamaliel. 
He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He knew the law very well. He, in fact, went around killing people who said they were Christians because he believed that it was a type of heresy, that it was a type of, you're going against God. You're saying that this man, Jesus, is the son of God. So he went about killing Christians because he thought it was a contradiction to the Jewish faith. So in his ignorance... That's what he did. That's why he writes so well in Romans 10. He says, my heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved. For I be bear them record, they have a zeal of God. Because he said, I had a zeal of God. I thought what I was doing was right. They got a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. Because mother, my zeal wasn't according to knowledge. They are ignorant of God's righteousness and they're going about to establish their own righteousness. And when you go about to establish your own righteousness, you will not submit to the righteousness of God. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 10. They being ignorant, they mean they don't know. Ignorant means they don't know God's way. They being ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. You know, if we really think we write about something, we like a dog with a bone. You can't talk us down. You can't tell us anything. We can show you the scripture in the Bible and you won't budge. Because um, when a man think he's right in the eyesight of God, you got to be careful. There is a way that does seem right, but the end thereof are the ways of death, the Bible says. Yeah, yeah. We got to be careful that whatever governs us, leads us, we can find it in the word of God. That's, That's why we say, no, don't take our word. Take, take them to the scripture. Let them see it themselves. You have to understand that when you came to Christ, your old nature is lost and you have a new nature, a new king. You've been translated from one kingdom into another. And the ultimate goal we told you was Romans 8, 29, that you be conformed to the image of Christ. Why did you think he delivered you? That you may be conformed. Conform means to shape to, yeah, yeah. to bend your will, your way to something that already exists. Conform. You be conformed, Elder Denise, to his image. Many of us resist that because we haven't died. Oh, I can tell you're thinking. We don't conform to God's word, God's way, because we haven't died yet. Our flesh still fights us regularly and it wins. If we don't feel like getting up to pray, we won't do it. If we don't want to fast, we're not doing it. And we say, God, know my heart. If we decide that today, I know I just got paid Friday, but I'm not tithing on Sunday. God knows my heart. We don't do it. Amen. If we make the decision, somebody upset me, I'm going to upset them back. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go and be peaceable. The Bible says as much depend on you to live peaceably with all men. Well, they started it, so I'm going to finish it. Oh, I'm just exposing the enemy on today. Because we're not conforming to his image, Asia. We're still doing us. And we're not conforming to the image of Christ. Yeah, that's, a problem. that's an indication you have not died yet. Yeah, yeah. Your own nature is still. Because anything that's dead, it doesn't do anything, Helen. Right. If you put a corpse, a cadaver in a coffin... Maybe at the time when you're embalming in some rigor mortis or something may set, set in, you may get a, a limb that get to acting ugly on its own. But after that little period, it, it, after that, it's done. You don't hear the body two and three days later say, hey, can I get a sip of apple juice? It, it, it's a dead body. It doesn't say, what am I doing in this, this coffin? Take me out of here. It's dead. Whatever's dead doesn't have life to it. Right. When we die to our flesh, we don't continue to resist the will of God. I'm glad you're thinking. It's only when we're not dead that there's this constant war that is not only coming upon us, but is overtaking us. So when the enemy comes in, he gets us every time. 
You, you, have you ever said, you know what, this, you know, I see that dang on devil. Next time when, when it happens like this, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, you know what, I'm going to pray your strength in the Lord, and I'm not going to go back and forth. And then when it happens again, deacon, what do you do? You go toe-to-toe -to -toe again with somebody again, and you're lost again because you're not dead yet. You're not dead to you. Paul tells us if you're in Christ, you're an old creature. Your old man passed away, and behold, all things become new. He says in verse, go with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And all of this, what is all of this? This newness in God. Amen. All of this newness is a gift from God Hallelujah. who brought us back to himself. Hallelujah. That's the NLT right. through Christ. Mm -hmm. God has given us the task of reconciling people to yes. him. Yes. Reconcile means to put back in right relation to balance the books. Balance the book. When we put people back, how can we put somebody back in right relationship with God when we ain't right with him? I like it. That's good. God is expecting us to die to ourselves, Amen. to our old nature. You say, well, why? Die to what? The attitude. Yeah. The quick to take offense. Oh, boy. The, the need to want to justify your actions. Right. The spirit of pride, where, yes. you're, where you don't have a teachable spirit. Oh, that when someone tells you something because they don't, may not have as much degree or education as you, you feel that they can't tell you anything, you don't have a teachable spirit. A teachable what, spirit. what is my old nature? It's, it's adulterous ways. Yeah. Fornication. Yeah. It's, it's, it's perversions. It's the tendency to want to watch pornography. Yeah. It's the things that's called witchcraft. Those are all part of our old ways. Reveling, strife, yeah. envy, jealousy, unbridled wrath, hatred, strife, fighting against one another. Yeah. All of these things are within a man and defile a man, the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. This is the thing that God wants us to allow to die. That when your brother rejoice, you rejoice with him. Not sitting looking with an in eye of envy saying, well, how did they get that? I didn't get one. Right. And then you're jealous and begrudging someone else's blessing. That has to die. Or judging something that you don't even understand. Wow. Speaking on things you have no knowledge about. That has, that has to die. Giving your brother or sister a hard time because somebody gave you a hard time. Yeah. That has to die. Drink it and, and contaminate your temple. The Bible says your body is the temple of God yeah. where the Holy Spirit dwells. You can't put anything in your body. Amen to that. Amen to that. You ought not be taking drugs, mood-altering drugs, yeah. that alter your sense of, 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 of rationalization. Right. Cannabis sativa. Right. Okay, weed. Right. Drinking. And I know some of us have found the scripture said, well, the Bible said I could drink for, for stomach sake. Anything that alters your mind is what's called pharmacology. Where you get the word pharmacy. Pharmakia. Witchcraft is a part of pharmakia. Because it alters, it manipulates the mind. The witchcraft does. Why would you ingest a drug, an alcohol, a beverage, a pill that will alter your state of being? Those are things that have to die. Misusing our temple. Fornication. Having sex before you get married. And I'm not just talking to young people. You got some old folk doing that too. Help me, mother. Amen. Oh, you all are thinking. That has to die. Yeah. That has to die. Yeah. Because we cannot be conformed to his image. When Christ was tempted, he went to the word. He went to the word. I love it. He, did, he didn't do what he wanted to do, there Jasmine. You know. He said, it is written. It is written. The enemy come this way. He said, no, I'm not falling for that because I'm dead to my flesh, to I'm going to do and honor God in my yeah. choices. Yeah. We're new creations, Apostle, yeah. and in order to be conformed to his image, we must first understand that we have to die. Yeah. And the only way that we're going to do it is through the word of God. 
The word of God helps us to understand in several. If you look here, if we go to Romans, go to Romans chapter 6. This isn't just in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Right. It's in Romans chapter 6. Right. It's in Colossians chapter 3. Paul incessantly talks about being crucified with Christ. Yes. That we have to die to our old nature. Yes. The thing that you, this is why he has this talk in Romans chapter 8. We're in Romans chapter 6, but in Romans chapter 8, he talks about this wrestling shine that, that goes on, Heinz, in the mind. That when I want to do good, I don't do that. The yeah. stuff I don't want to do, that's the stuff I find myself doing. Yeah. Have you ever, yeah. if you've been on a fast these last three days, I just said, what I would give to have a bite of corn. Yeah. Just a bite of corn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Somebody God. said, I just want a mashed potato. I just wanted some nuts and And rings. see, if, you, if you're doing a Daniel, you can have a potato. Right. But you all not be doctoring it up, putting the mayonnaise in it and doing all that and the butter and the milk. and all. You all not be doing all of that now. I'll, I'll not be doing you that. You ought to have your, your little potato with, with maybe a little salt and that's it. Oh, I didn't expose some of y'all. Y'all yeah, done hooked them potatoes them, up, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. You done cut up some onions. You said this grew out the ground. You done cut up some potatoes. You done got you some olive oil. Said this came from an olive. You fried that thing up real good and had you some smothered potatoes. Ooh. And if you did, it's all right. If you did, it, it, it's okay. Lord have mercy. But... When we started this consecration, Betty, I know without a doubt I, I got to do this because yeah. there's some strongholds that have to be destroyed. There's some yokes that have to be loose. Yeah. There's yeah. some people yeah. that need to be delivered. There's some members that need to be healed. Some people that need to be set free. And not only is their fast going to do it, but our fast together, Helen, we're going to get some extraordinary yeah, results yeah, yeah, yeah. so I can't just say I'm going to feed my flesh today no. oh God Hallelujah. It, it, I started getting nervous Hallelujah. oh my God and I knew it was my flesh Rob yeah. because most days I can go 3, 4 o'clock and before I have my first meal yeah. now all of a sudden at 12 I'm thinking about food the enemy is riding me yeah. because he doesn't want me to honor the consecration. Right. But that's a classic case. When I desire to do good, evil, evil is somewhere to... The, the Lord know your heart. Well, you know if you just have a little potato, the Lord ain't going to be mad. I know the Lord ain't going to be mad at me. I know this, but I got to take one for the team. No. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul knew the struggle. He knew it so well, that's why he writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That's why he writes in Romans chapter 6. That's why he writes in Colossians. He knew what it meant that you had to die to your flesh in order to walk this race out. You're not going to be able to do this if you don't die. And too many Christians are trying to live for Christ and you haven't died yet. You haven't died yet. He asks a poignant question in Romans chapter 6. Yeah. He says, well then, should we keep on sinning God. so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? My Lord tonight. Pastor, what in the world you talk about? My Lord tonight. When we get to Christ and we accept him, see it, yeah. we know by Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace we are saved yes. through faith. Yes. It is the gift of God. So God says, when I save you, you're not going to start bragging about how good you are, how upright you are. Right. It's a gift. Right. I'm giving it to you. Hallelujah. And it's nothing you can do to earn it. Hallelujah. So let me just put that to the side. You, Your salvation is a gift. Hallelujah. And we got it through grace. Okay? Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith. Amen. So Paul says, grace is God's unmerited, undeserved favor. Hallelujah. That means we don't deserve it, but he gave it to us Amen. anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we got delivered from the kingdom of darkness Hallelujah. and we came into the kingdom of his dear son, Listen. we're now under this grace. Right. So now, because we're under grace, Paul says just because you've been saved by grace doesn't give you a license to keep doing the stuff you was doing 
before God brought you over here and then come in and say, God, forgive me. I'm under grace. God, I told my neighbor off. She had it coming. God, I told my supervisor, they know what they can do with this job. They had it coming, but God, forgive me. God, I went to the store and I got me a five finger discount. You know, your girl didn't have no money and I was hungry. I had to feed myself and my kids. So I got my little five finger discount, but God, forgive me. Paul says, shall you keep sinning because you've been in his new kingdom? My God, tonight. He answers the question in verse 2. He says, of course not. Just because I've extended my grace doesn't give you a license to keep doing the stuff you were doing before I saved you. Oh, my God. Of course not. Since we have, oh, there it goes again. Yep. Died to sin. Since we have died to sin, yep. if you're dead to it, how are you living in it? We're not trying to sermonize you tonight. No, no. Listen to And it word. ain't going to be very many sermons probably for me this right, year. Right. Unless I'm teaching by myself and I get extra excited about the word of God and I can't control myself because I'm just excited. But our design is to be didactic, to right. teach, right. not to move your emotion. No. We have too many Christians that don't know the word of God. Yeah. And it's time away for that. Yeah. Yeah. There is no place for that. Done. You need to know why you were saved and yes. what you're supposed to do Hallelujah. after you got saved. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.